All right, so now that we have the UVs taken care of, I'll go ahead and close that. I do want to make one little change here, and it'll become obvious when I go into sub-D mode, tapping the 3 key, and I'm going to actually, you know, instead of this, the, uh, the sub-D preview, I'm just going to go ahead and add a smooth modifier, but I'm going to delete all of this stuff in here. So we'll go edit, delete by type history, and then we'll go to mesh and smooth. And you can see in my, my divisions here, I have five in there already. And I think yours will probably come in with like one. So it's very easy to change that. You can just select the geo, go to the poly smooth face, and then under divisions, you can just add uh, or change that value to five. And now we're getting five divisions. And what I noticed is I have kind of a little pinch back here, and I want that to be a little bit more of a smooth feature. You can really see it on the sides there. So I'm going to uh, come over here and set this to zero, which basically takes us back to our default. And we'll just go ahead and say edit delete by type history, just to get rid of that thing for now. And what I need to do is the reason I'm getting that pinching is because I have these two edges so close together, it's kind of reinforcing this corner here. So I want to move this edge loop to the middle of these faces. So the easiest way to do that without changing the silhouette is I'm going to go to my vertex, we'll double click on the move tool. And then I'm going to have this transform constraint. By default, it's set to off. I'm going to change it down to edge. So transform constraint here in the move tool settings. So all you got to do is double, double click that, and you'll get this menu pop up. So now when I move this, it's going to snap those, those verts. And you can see I've got my, my object X symmetry on as well. It's going to snap to whatever edge they're sitting on. So if I go this way, it's going to snap to this edge. If I go this way, it's going to snap to that edge. And it's just an easy way to move these things without changing the silhouette of the uh, the other edge, basically, that they're sitting on. So we'll just move all the stuff so that it is approximately in the middle of that uh, these two edges on the either side there. And now when I go back to Smooth, Mesh, Smooth, You can see it's much less noticeable. That uh, there is still a little bit of a feature there, but it's okay. It's a little bit improved. And that's all we're looking for is just a little bit better. All right, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to just delete the history on this. Actually, I'm going to set this back to zero. And we're going to call this hammer underscore low. And we need to soften the edges. So that's mesh display, soften edges. And we need to assign a material to it. The material assignment is, is important. It, it has to do with how many texture sets are going to be exporting out of Painter, which is the next, the next step. And for an asset like this, and almost all assets, you're going to want to just have one texture set. So we'll just go ahead and assign this material. So now the blin is sitting on the hammer. And I'm going to rename this blin here to hammer, uh, hammer underscore mat. So we know it's the hammer material. So here's our hammer low. It is assigned to hammer mat. And we can go ahead and get rid of this now. That's all we need. And now I'm going to go ahead and make the high poly version. So I'm going to hit Control D. And then we'll go back to our mesh display, sorry, uh, mesh and smooth. And there we go. So we've got our low, which I'm going to hide, the high, which looks fine. I'm going to rename this to high. So now our high and low poly geometry is finished and ready for baking in Substance Painter. So Substance Painter is a tool for creating textures that make this object look realistic. You can actually uh, also do renders with it. And the way that you are going to get it is head over here, substance3d.com forward slash education. And it'll, it'll take you to the page where you can get your free educational copy of Substance Painter. There are a lot of other Substance products. Make sure you grab Painter. And uh, once we do that, I'm going to go to Hammer Low, and we'll go File, Export Selection. I'm going to go to 3D Foundations. By the way, if you've got in your folder bookmarks here, if you want to you want to put something in here, you can just click and drag, and it will then be there. So I'm going to go ahead, and I need to export this as an FBX. I'm not sure if I have that selected properly. Let me back up a minute. File, export selection. 
we'll go to hammer. And the my on the uh, files of type drop down, scroll down until you see FBX export, and we're gonna call this one hammer underscore low. And then we'll come over to hammer high and repeat that process. So export selection. And you can see hammer low is there. I'm just going to rename this one to hammer high. Okay, so with that done, we can head over to Substance Painter. So at some point, if you're still installing or whatever, you can go ahead and pause the video and, and uh, get that taken care of. I have a crash course, a one-hour crash course on Substance Painter on YouTube, which you can get to by Googling Isaac Oster one-hour painter crash course. And it'll take you through a very similar workflow that is a little bit more detailed than what we're about to do here, and I highly recommend you do it. Uh, but uh, you can just kind of follow along with this and it'll be a, you know, your 10 minute crash course, which might actually be more, more useful. So I need to make a new file. So I'm going to go file new. And in this, this uh, new project menu here, the first thing I need to do is say, okay, what's my low poly geo? So we'll go over to 3D foundations, hammer, and I'll select hammer low. And we'll just leave the rest of it as is. And here you can see our geometry. Once that's done, you want to go to your texture set settings. If for some reason you do not see texture set settings, you can simply go to window, views, texture set settings. You should see up here in your texture set list, hammer mat. It's a, a, a nice way to confirm that we've only got one material here. In texture set settings, we are going to go down to the mesh maps menu. We're going to type bake mesh maps. We're going to set this to 2048. We'll leave all of the stuff as is. In the high definition meshes, we need to select our high definition mesh, which is going to be hammer high. And then we can leave all of this as it is. In the anti-aliasing, we're going to set this to two by two. So aliasing is that stair stepping thing that I was talking about, where you have your UVs off the horizontal or vertical. There's always going to be a little bit. So we want to set the anti-aliasing to two by two, which is basically just a filter that gets applied to your bakes to make them look a little bit nicer. In this case, we don't need to worry about this. This match is basically, well, I'm not going to get into that. It doesn't really matter. It'll give you the same result uh, regardless of which option you pick in this scenario. And then we're just going to hit bake selected textures. So what it is doing is it is looking at the difference between the high poly and the low poly, and it is creating maps, uh, textures here that will be able to accurately represent uh, the, that difference in, a, in, in the right context, which is basically uh, with a, a shader that is, that is set up to handle them. So we'll just give it a minute here to finish. Okay, so this is the exact same low poly model. You can see how faceted it is around the end there, but we're getting all of this lovely detail, all of this lighting here that we have basically inherited from the high poly model. So what we've just done is called baking texture maps. These are specifically baking mesh maps. The mesh maps are the ones that describe the difference between the high poly and the low poly. If I hold the shift key and the right mouse button, I can rotate my light around. So this is sort of the, the secret sauce that makes making game art possible. We can have something that is extremely low poly but it has this, the, the lighting information that you would get off of the high poly surface. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hop over to layers for just a second, and I'll just grab any old material here, we'll steel rough. So here you can see how nice this looks, and it's just a few hundred polygons with some textures on it. So we're gonna do a quick texturing pass on this in the next video. And uh, yeah, that should get you started for, for using Substance Painter. And again, if you want to, when we're done here, if you want to head over to the, uh, the one hour crash course, that will be a little bit more in depth on, on how to create some decent looking textures here in Substance Painter.